In this demo, I want to show the effects of CPU ready time on SQL Server workload performance. I'm running this demo using VMware ESX5, but you can see the same effects as far back as ESX35 in my experience in every version since then. Now, what I have is I have our SQL Server 2012 virtual machine that's running inside of our ESX host, and I've connected to the ESX host using application called PuTTY through SSH and I'm showing the results for ESX Top and we're going to talk about ESX Top and more about the performance counters that are being displayed here in module 8 but right now the one that we want to look at is this percent ready time and as you can see with our books online workload running we're doing somewhere in the the upper ranges of the high 200s fluctuating into the 300s periodically for our workload. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually perform some VM migrations. And you can see right now we have roughly 16, 12% ready time, and that's across four virtual CPUs. So we're actually only seeing somewhere between three and 5% ready time, which is somewhat high, but it's a engineered demonstration to actually make ready time be problematic. So what I'm going to do is on another screen, I'm actually going to vMotion two application servers over to the same ESX host. And when I do that, we're going to actually have a shift in our workload because right now the SQL Server is able to schedule entirely across the physical processors. And when we migrate our two application servers over, they're combined workloads are actually going to begin to affect our SQL Server workload. And we can see here, we're having big drops in our batch requests per second, and we're having really high ready times associated with our virtual machine. And if we take a look at what's going on inside of SQL, we actually won't be able to see what actually is causing this. We would actually have to go look at what was going on at the host level. And this is one of the challenges with virtualization and ready time. And we'll actually see our SQL VM is actually starting to pause during its execution because it hits a ready state and it's waiting for CPU time to actually be able to run. And we're seeing higher percent processor times associated with the virtual machine running. And it's going to recover after the vMotion process completes and the application VMs sit on the same host and are actually in a stable state. And we see our batch requests recover fairly nicely and our virtual machine is still running with higher ready time than it had before, but we're still meeting what were closer to numbers for our original workload. And this can be a challenge for where end users report that they're having application slowness or performance problems and then they just immediately disappear with virtual machines. Now, one of the things that we could do is kick off a workload. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start up a Geekbench benchmark on each of the application VMs that I migrated. And that's going to allow them to start driving some CPU usage. And as we do that, we'll see our SQL virtual machine starts to take another performance hit for the number of batch requests per second. And it will slowly start to catch back up as the CPU scheduler starts to balance things a little but you'll notice that we're running really high ready percents for our virtual machines. And this is gonna affect the performance that we're actually getting out of them. So CPU ready time is one of those things that we really wanna track when we're dealing with low latency, high throughput workloads like SQL Server that we wanna virtualize on VMware. And it's really nice that we're able to track this. This is just one method that we can use for tracking it. We'll talk about the other ones in module eight, but this demo's really, driven towards showing what the effect towards our batch request per second was. And if we cancel these two benchmark workloads on our application VMs on another screen, and the reason I'm doing that off screen is you wouldn't actually see the effect of this from inside of your SQL Server VM if you were monitoring, we'll see that our batch requests per second balance back out and our percent ready times come back down very nicely. And this is one of those scenarios that can be really difficult to monitor for unless you have the appropriate tools and having a good configuration for your virtual machine. In this case, the ESX host that we're looking at only has four CPUs allocated to it 
inside of our virtualized platform, but we have eight virtual CPUs and our SQL Server VM is actually using four virtual CPUs. So we're double subscribed and as a result of the sizing of our virtual machine with the workload, we're actually more prone to hitting ready issues for this specific SQL Server VM.